For the tenth game in a row, Taylor pushed Nana away, dodging Valir's fire while playing Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Damn, that burnt cigarette stick is taking over the center lane, Taylor shouted, licking his sore thumb from playing. He sat down on the sofa. He did not notice a fat homeless man with a thick beard standing outside the house and staring at him through the kitchen window. Nana's voice came from the game app saying, Apple pies are the best things ever. The homeless man knocked on the window but Taylor did not hear him. His hand twitched as he used the ultimate skill against Valir, who had turned into a rabbit Molina by Taylor near the first tower. While the homeless man outside smiled, Taylor's mother texted him via messenger. We might be late. But Taylor angrily pushed the notice away. While playing, he moved Nana near the grass, where an enemy hiding there froze her for a moment. Then Franco's hook pulled her towards him as the enemies attacked her from all directions, and she did not move a muscle until she was eliminated. Taylor groaned at his sore thumb as he waited for the game timer. Then he wrote in the game chat, cursing his teammate, who embodies the character, Tigreal. Meanwhile, the homeless man looked at the refrigerator, swallowed his saliva, and then looked at the knife holder on the marble table under the window before disappearing into the grass of the courtyard. The game timer ended and Nana came back to life. Taylor walked as Nana along the middle lane and began throwing Molina into the grass on both sides of the lane to turn nearby enemies into a slow Molina rabbit. When he noticed Valir's absence from the middle lane, he rushed towards the tower with the minions. Then he heard the back door of the house shake violently. Who? he exclaimed. The tailgate handle turned several times and would not open. Taylor stood up and moved towards the door, still looking at the mobile phone intently, destroying the first tower in the middle lane before raising his head from the mobile phone and making sure the door was securely locked. Is that you, Mom? he shouted. On his way back to the couch, he saw the homeless man standing outside, looking at him through the window, smiling. He shouted in fear and dropped the mobile phone. While the homeless man pointed his finger to his mouth, he moved his hands hopefully and smiled at Taylor. From the mobile phone that fell to the ground, Taylor heard Nana's phrase that she usually repeats in the game. Mama told me not to judge others. Taylor raised the window leaf a small distance that allowed a piece of bread to pass through and closed it quickly. Taylor looked at the homeless man who kept looking at the wooden knife carrier as he left in the dark. Then he heard the game's announcer shouting, You've been slain! He made sure all the doors were closed and returned to the game, repeatedly watching the window. He destroyed the second tower in the middle lane and looked back at the window. While playing, he found Leslie, who was on the enemy team, so he immediately turned her into Molina and used the ultimate skill before he was pulled back by Franco's hook and the opponent team gathered around him to kill Nana again. Then he heard a knock on the window and found a homeless woman asking for food, repeating the same finger gesture that the homeless man had made. As he stood, he heard Nana's voice from the game saying, I will share everything with you, cause we are friends. He passed another piece of bread before he saw the back door shaking violently. He was busy looking at the door and could not stop the woman's hand, which grabbed his hand to prevent him from pulling it and she inserted her other hand and pulled a knife from the knife holder. Taylor got rid of her hand, shouting, and quickly closed the door, and the piece of bread became mashed in his hand. The last thing he saw of the game when he got out of it to call his mother was the opposing team with the Lord at Taylor's team base. I saw a thief, and the homeless woman stole a knife. Taylor shouted on the phone to his mother. Then he winced when he saw the homeless man, the lady, and a few homeless teenagers gathered around the glass windows. The woman hit the window with the knife several times while Taylor quickly climbed the stairs to the second floor, hearing stones hitting the window. When he entered his room upstairs, he heard the windows breaking, so he closed the door to his room and called the police, giving his address and telling them what happened. Then he grabbed a baseball bat and stood ready behind the door. He heard a woman shouting downstairs, Enough, Franco. Leave something for the kids. The man shouted with food in his mouth. There's a lot of food, Leslie. Taylor then looked at a ceramic rabbit figurine on his desk before breaking it with a baseball bat. At exactly 9.45 p.m., Taylor heard the police car. Don't forget to get rid of the boxes. Jack, the owner of the house, woke from a short faint 
and found himself lying on the floor in the living room, between the table and the sofa. He suffered from a severe injury to his head. Before he sat down, he quickly searched for his phone. He had pain in his knee when trying to stand. Jack noticed that his white t-shirt, which had a picture of a koala printed on it, had become stained with a red spot on the shoulder due to his head injury. When he found his phone under the sofa, and its screen was cracked, he called the police. He said after telling them his address, I was robbed and hit hard in the head and knee. Then, after hearing little from the policeman, he added, they forgot personal belongings before they left, as he looked at a black bag on the table. Then he jumped up when he heard a cracking sound upstairs. Before he saw one of the thieves running down the stairs, carrying an open bag from which hung a gold chain belonging to Jack's wife. Jack took a position of readiness to fight despite his injury, but the thief took off, jumping off the sofa and then out of the house, completely avoiding Jack. Jack looked around in horror as the doors opened wide. The noise increased upstairs. He limped with his left foot towards the basement before he took his phone and the thieves' bag with him. They're still here, he whispered to the policeman on the phone. After a minute, two robbers came down from above. They heard the sound of a car drifting outside. One of them had an orange shirt, and the other had a black shirt. I told you not to bring Daniel, because he's a treacherous man, the man in the orange shirt said, and listened to the sound of the car driving away. We'll take the homeowner's car, said the black-shirted man. Let's catch up with him then, the orange shirt said as they left, but his colleague caught him. He says, where's the bag? He looked at the table. His bag was not on. I'm sure it's in Daniel's possession, the man in the orange shirt said, and his hand trembled after he looked at the empty table with horror. Daniel had one bag with him when he got into the car, the black-shirted man said, adding, it's in the possession of the owner of the house as he looked at the closed basement door. Then he continued, I shouldn't have involved you either. Don't worry, we'll find it quickly, the orange shirt said, looking at the gun in his colleague's hand. We have to find it and get rid of that koala downstairs, the black-shirted man said, pointing to the basement. The one in the orange shirt broke the handle and cut his hand. Then he looked in horror at his colleague. Great, the evidence is complete, the black-shirted man said. They entered the basement slowly, aiming their pistols. The basement was filled with dusty boxes. The man in the black shirt looked at the ground, where the dirt was making circles, then looked at a single box on the ground. He removed his footprints with this box. Jack was hiding in a hole in the wall, but hidden behind boxes. I know you're here, koala, the black shirt said to the hiding Jack, looking around warily. The black-shirted thief kicked the boxes that pressed against Jack's injured knee, who suppressed the pain by biting his lip. We want to leave without damage if we get valuable things, the black shirt said to Jack. They then heard the mobile phone notification coming from somewhere in the room. Jack quickly changed all the sound settings to silent mode after he received a text message notification from his wife. Don't forget to repair the, the hole in the basement wall and get rid of the boxes. Did you hear that? The black shirt said. It's been ten minutes, the orange shirt whispered anxiously. He's here, he said, looking at the blood stain on the box. Then everyone heard a cracking sound and electrical sparks. The lights in the apartment dimmed. There was a smell of burnt plastic. The black shirt started throwing the boxes away. Nice passport. Your new identity will be recognised. Jack shouted when the black shirt was about to find him. The damned one opened the bag, the man in the orange shirt shouted, smelling the smell of burning electrical wire insulation. I sent the pictures to all my contacts, Jack shouted in pain. The two thieves fled without getting the bag. On their way out, you are the one who will drive the car, the man in the black shirt said to his colleague. Then he added as they jogged into the yard, we could have been born again. Are you going to get rid of me, like you're going to do with Daniel? The orange shirt said anxiously as they approached the car. The man in the black shirt did not respond as he sat down. In the basement, Jack remained motionless, until he heard the sound of police cars 
and after a while the policeman arrived in the basement. Jack shouted, Help me! Two policemen moved the boxes until they found him.